Hi guys, welcome to the Sports Story 15 minute episodes, otherwise known as the SS15. I'm Ruby and I'll be hosting lots of these episodes along with Lucas, where both of us will cover topical themes from the world of sports in a short, sharp and to the point conversation with a wide range of guests. To kickstart these new episodes, we have Tawanda Meyeya, a professional cricketer, sharing his story and shedding light on mental health as an athlete. Enjoy the podcast and look forward to many more SS15 episodes. If you want to stay in the loop, then jump onto one of the many social media platforms where we'll, we will have daily updates. Without further ado, here's Tawanda. My name is Tawanda. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm 20 years old. I'm a professional cricketer for Kenya, and I'm originally from Zimbabwe. Yeah. So yeah, and I started playing cricket when I was probably about like four or five with my brother, and then okay. with my best friend, the twins as well and we were much younger so that's basically where it kind of all starts for me and then kind of just gradually went through the ages the ranks and stuff and then I left Zimbabwe when I was 16 I think and then I came over to England and went to Eastbourne that's where I probably got better and gained the confidence to like trust myself in cricket and then from then on I just decided to potentially go pro and sign my first contract in April last year it's been it's been an interesting journey. It's been tough, but yeah, I've enjoyed it so far. I can imagine. Wow. So like your your sort of cricket journey really took off once you got to the UK then? Because you said that's where yeah. you came to confidence. I think like I was always like good and stood out when I was younger, but I never had like the confidence in myself to like maybe like become a pro and stuff. Well, what, what conf- gave you the confidence then? I think probably the coaching when I got to England, the coaching and the amount of like trust the coaches had for me, the time they had for me. So like the amount of training I did yeah. when I came to England was like literally insane compared to what I did in Zimbabwe. Okay, fine. But I think the, the amount of hours I probably put into that and like the coaches helped definitely played like a massive like factor for me. Okay, so you very much flourished when you got to the UK. Yeah, I would say so. Okay, and sort of from Zim all the way to where you are now, what has that journey involved in terms of, so you've signed a contract and, you know, you're professional. I, it, before that, was did you very much climb a sporting ladder or did you kind of jump from just school player to professional? Like It was like, weird. It was a weird one, to be fair, because I never, ever really, like, thought I'd be a professional, like, this early. So, like, it was more of I'll go to university, study yeah. a degree and then kind of chase my dream after. Yeah. And then COVID kind of happened, and I left school in March, so I literally didn't finish school properly. But I obviously had a lot of time to, like, think about what I wanted to do in the future, whether I wanted to go to university that September or take a gap year and try to play cricket. So COVID happened, and I spoke to my parents after, like, thinking about it for quite a long time. And I probably gave my parents, like, a bit of a headache just because they were a bit stressed about me. So I just yeah. told them, like, I don't want to go to university. Okay. anymore and I want to like try chase cricket so it kind of happened where lockdown happened I'd left school there was no real like structure so I didn't really know what path I had to take to become a professional cricketer and there was a bit of complications because my family are refugees so yeah. I we were kind of applying for me to be a, like a resident in the in the United Kingdom yeah. And then, so like whilst that was still going on, I was kind of unsure about like what I was going to do and stuff. And then luckily I got an opportunity to play in like an intra-squad game for Kent. Yeah. And the director of cricket happened to be there and I did okay. And literally that's when he offered me a contract. So I think it was, that was in October or November of 2020. So, so you did okay and then you got offered a, a contract. Yeah. You must have so done then, pretty good. Yeah, so I think it was probably like a massive jump. So literally, there was no ladder. It was kind of like I was in school in March and then in October, I got offered a contract literally out of nowhere. And then in April, wow. kind of signed it. That's pretty amazing. I mean, that sounds like, you know, most people sort of had a horrible time in COVID, but it sounds like there was a silver lining for you in the sense it gave you time to sort of reflect and really think what you wanted. And yeah. here you are yeah. now with the contract. Yeah, to be fair, COVID was hard though, without saying, and everyone I'm sure found like quite a tough period. So did I, mentally, yeah. physically, and everything. Really? 
So yeah, it was quite nice like when things like that happen and stuff. And luckily I got to see loads of my friends during that summer. So That's it took good. my mind to a lot of things. Yeah. Um, so yeah. What what was your reaction or sort of yeah, your reaction like when you were offered the contract? Because that that really um, is quite a sort of jump the way you've explained things. Yeah, I was really happy actually, just because like it happened so quickly, it probably yeah. happened five years before I thought it would. That's amazing. That was, like, <laughs> Uh, yeah um, your dreams yeah. are not chasing you <laughs> <laughs> i know yeah. i know my parents so like it was nice to like be able to tell my parents and my siblings because my brother and i like always wanted to be professional cricketers when we were younger i guess yeah at some point in our lives but my brother's chosen a different path and luckily okay. i kind of just stayed stayed on that path and, okay yeah. you stuck to what you wanted yeah okay well it, i'm that's really impressive so with saying all of this you know you've already touched on COVID and briefly like how, where you've got to but you know from you can start from when you first started cricket or more talking about post-COVID like what is your sort of the strain on your physical sort of abilities or your and your mental health how has that been through your cricketing journey like but that's also on the pitch and off the pitch in training out of training yeah, that's okay. That's a good question, actually. I'm actually like quite a mental health advocate. So, but again, I would say ages from like four to like 12, not much like mentally, cricket like didn't really affect me. And then I think I had one bad year when I was like 12. Yeah. And literally went from rock bottom for me. Like I felt like the world was crumbling at oh, such really? a young age. It was so weird. That is very young. Yeah. And then, but like it was just literally a small blip and. Anyway, I carried on with life. Things were okay. And then from 12, I'd say from that like moment to about 17, I'd say, was the next, when I was 17, I kind of got told that I, so I played for Sussex before. So I got yeah. kind of got told that um, I couldn't play for Sussex anymore because I was an international student. So the visa that I was on. Oh, wow. Okay. And, and like allow me to carry on playing for them so that so was like it, had, it had nothing to do with your ability it was to do with external yeah. factors so it was just wow. kind of like factors that were out of my control but obviously okay. in that moment yeah again felt like my world was ending and yeah, I took I that know. one very like personally it was quite hard for me and it kind of affected my game so like it affected my schoolwork it affected yeah. my cricket that year um so yeah that was pretty I would say my probably my first proper experience like mental health yeah in cricket and like on and off the field and then I would say COVID COVID year obviously when we were all stuck in our houses and stuff was quite a tough period for me because a lot of time thinking again and sometimes I am an overthinker I would say yeah <laughs> a lot of things normal so I think I struggled a bit there but luckily having my family and stuff around was quite nice and it was quite good to like have a reality check and stuff yeah. with my family and stuff which is quite nice for me and reassuring and luckily I got through that which is nice and some good friends as well and ah. then fast forward to 2021 when I signed everything and everything everything was meant to be like all rosy and stuff so I started quite well with Kent I did really well it was a good start good environment and I was enjoying it and stuff and I am quite hard on myself yeah I'm sure a lot of people are on various aspects of life. And yeah. I think I went through like a blip in the season last year where I, I didn't score a lot of runs and I was just like struggling a bit for form. So like that affected me quite a lot. So sometimes I do get quite emotional with cricket. I'm quite emotionally attached to it. So well, I can it, imagine. It, yeah. It's passion quite, is, yeah. Yeah. So again at 20, I had another like period where I was like, oh my word, like my world's crashing down. Yeah. So I think for me, a lesson that I probably learned last year, especially in the professional environments, that you have to look after yourself and you have to be like kind to yourself. And it's still something that I'm working on like today. Um, yeah, of course. I had a training session yesterday where like things didn't, I was, so basically I'm working on something specific at the moment. And when I didn't get it right, I'd like get really upset with myself. So like yeah. it's being able to remind yourself to basically just take things as they come and just don't be too hard on yourself and just speak kindly to yourself. Yeah, of course. Well, I was actually, I'm talking to Rory about this and saying, you know, cause he's an athlete, you're an athlete. And as an athlete, you're so used to pushing yourself 
Sorry, uh, you're so used to like pushing yourself to you know, the limits, you know, to the highest sort of standard. And so, and that kind of comes with everything across the board. So when it gets to mental health, Rory Lisa is saying, you know, he pushes him and pushes and pushes himself. I think with mental health, that's one aspect you should just actually step back. And like you said, just kind yeah. of look after yourself because that's not something you want to push and that's not something you want to kind of topple yeah. over because it's very yeah, fragile. I think, I think definitely like the ability to like get away and find like, if you like spending time with your girlfriend, like do that. If you like yeah. reading, if you like doing self-care things and like there's nothing wrong, like there's no like form of self-care that's wrong. So yeah. whatever works nice. for you. And I think being young people, we should like explore like things that, make us happy put us at peace whether it's swimming in the sea like for me so oh, really the sea is quite a big I, thing i like swimming in the sea too yeah so yeah. if you do that like for me if i do that i'm like so happy literally yeah. um so it's being able to find things that you enjoy that put you at ease and just yeah so you're able to come back to training tomorrow or to the match to be able to perform to like your best of your abilities i would say yeah no, I think that's actually very well said. I also, I just quickly wanted to touch on, so you talked about 12, and you said 17 and 20, you know, all the different points you had these low moments, but, you know, two of them in the middle, I saw the correlation was, you know, you got sad and your mental health went down when cricket was about to almost be taken away from you, which links in quite nicely with the, you know, it's not a nice thing, but the silver lining there is, so when sports isn't in your life or cricket isn't in your life, it sounds like, you know, your mental health isn't as good because I'm assuming it has a huge positive impact on who you are, what you are, what you stand for. And I just want to talk about that now. Like, what has cricket done for you as a person, like, you know, on and off the pitch? I think, wow, and no one's ever asked me that. That's actually a good question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I have to think about this one. But I think for me to start with, cricket has like probably given me a lot of happiness, like in times when I struggled a bit. I come from a family where my parents are split up. Yeah. So I think definitely cricket and rugby, I played rugby a lot, but cricket in particular was my favorite. So yeah. it helped me like spend time with people, um, be with my friends, get to know new people, and kind of made me like put things like to the back of my mind and just enjoy what I'm doing and it still does the same for me today it's made me some good friends yeah. it's taught me discipline it's taught me to be humble a lot I think <laughs> especially cricket good. because cricket is very it's a very hard game yeah and there's days when you do well and there's days where you don't do well so being able to like humble yourself and just kind of just float in the middle and not get too happy okay. and not get too sad okay. just kind of finding that balance I think that's important. important yeah I think cricket has also taught me that you have to put other people first sometimes before yourself okay. and not be selfish I I guess you do have to be selfish in some sort of way to like chase that kind of like goal as an athlete but yeah just being able to like say oh my gosh like I'm gonna do this for my teammate because he's a bit tired or I'm gonna do this for my teammate because he's just injured or something do you know what I mean so yeah of course well being a team player that's amazing skill yeah. to have in life that's cricket's yeah. probably really given you that being able to do that and I think probably being confident and like being sure of myself as that's what cricket has also given me like, yeah I'm sure yeah. myself and just be myself because I think I am quite different like cricketing wise to a lot of like people so it's sometimes you do feel an advocate or different and stuff I think just also being able to embrace like who you are and yeah. what you do and stuff so like that also goes in terms for things like fashion and stuff it's like I'm quite like I just wear what I like you got cool it. fashion you got very yeah. cool fashion yeah I don't, I don't mind being judged so yeah that's also what it's taught me okay so thick skinned as well you know you can take yeah. things on board yeah just because I don't know you know, for me personally, because I'm not, I wouldn't say like I'm an extrovert, but like I'm confident, okay. but I'm not going to be that guy that's like going to take his shirt off in the middle of the dance floor. Oh no, like, not quite like that. that. <laughs> yeah, no, but see, that's the sort of... I think I can, I'm quite happy to hold a conversation and yeah. like just get to know people and stuff. So I think, yeah, yeah well, that's that's helped quite a lot socially. But I, okay. I think I'm naturally, I'm quite shy. I'm like my dad a bit. Like okay. I'm quite reserved at the start. And then like when I get to know someone, then... 
I'm a bit like louder. <laughs> okay. Say, yeah. yeah, I like that. You warm up to people then. Yeah. Okay, that's always. Awesome. I'm sure probably the first time you made me like this guy. What is he doing? Like, why is he so quiet? <laughs> well, you know, I noticed you asked. You know, you asked very good questions, and you know, you 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 take your time with people, which I like. I respect that a lot. You know, and you you do more than just short talk. You know, so I yeah. think that's I appreciate that a lot because I try to do the same. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I wanted to sort of sort of come to an end with this by asking you if you know because obviously this podcast so when we put it out there there'll be listeners you know from your sporting experience and your sporting journey but also not just sports but your just journey you know from all the way from Zim as well and all the way to the UK like do you have any advice for people with mental health from you know if you can relate that from with sports or outside of that yeah well I'll do my best and it doesn't have but to be long just I think I think being able to speak to people like don't be shy I guess sometimes for me I find it quite hard to speak to people I don't I like I know quite well so like yeah. I sometimes can start a conversation with a stranger and kind of just like speak to them about life and stuff and yeah. it gives you a bit of perspective well for me personally it does and being able to speak to your family I think that's very important like it doesn't have to be a friend but it can be family I think maybe finding like a bit of a purpose or like for me I'm religious so okay. for me that gives me peace so it's kind of like my spiritual well-being yeah, so I do awesome. something like that. So I think you just definitely have to look after your emotional well-being, spiritual well-being, mental well-being, and physical well-being. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, I think that's the best I could do. No, that's amazing. That's amazing. I think yeah, touching on spiritual well-being is a whole other thing, but extremely important. Something yeah. I'm very into as well. I think yeah. whatever way you look at it, it's an important thing to think about. But yeah, yeah no, that's amazing. And thank you so much, genuinely, for being the first guest. Very easy to talk to as well. Thank you for listening, guys, and to Tawanda. I'll catch you on the next one. Until then, stay active.